Hi, my name is Hiro Ono. We pre-record this presentation because both Olivier and I are on the Perseverance Exploration team and we are working on the Mars step shift. So, we landed another rover on Mars last week. Woohoo! I'm sure everyone is excited. Yeah, we are very excited. And if you have not seen this phenomenal landing movie, uh, make sure to watch it. It's truly phenomenal. It's on YouTube. And from now on, uh, we will drive this vehicle for about two years, uh, two Earth years, to search for the sign of ancient life that might have existed on Mars long, long time ago. So Perseverance has the most um, sophisticated, autonomous, surface mobility that have ever driven on extraterrestrial soil. You know, these days, many companies on Earth pour billions of dollars to realize self-driving cars, but actually JPL, JPL rovers have been driving on Mars autonomously for more than a decade. And now, the enhanced alternate algorithm that uh, Olivier and I developed would substantially extend the driving distance. So what is the speed? Well, it is five centimeters per second. Yes, five centimeters per second, or about 0.1 miles per hour. It's slow. Well, there are a number of reasons why it's so slow, um, but is that the hard limit? Is high-speed surface mobility a privilege only available on, Mar on, on Earth? Apparently, no because there was a counterexample. The Apollo Lunar Roving Vehicle back in 1970s, its top speed was 18 kilometers per hour or 11 miles per hour. That was about 100 times faster than Perseverance. So how did they do this? Well, the mechanical system was, in fact, very simple. And the key was the intelligent perception and planning system, which was human astronaut. So the question is, can machine intelligence do the same? Well, honestly, I think it would take centuries, if not millennia, for AI to catch up human intelligence. But still, can't rover do just one-tenth of what humans can do in terms of driving? Up to perseverance, the main bottleneck for onboard autonomy um, has been the highly limited onboard computation power resource. Her main CPU is RAD 750, which is the uh, radiation hardened version of PowerPC 750, the main chip of iMac G3 back in 1998. But now modern processors for space are becoming available. For example, NASA and Air Force are working together to create the High Performance Spacecraft Computing, or HPSC, and the Mars Helicopter Ingenuity, which was brought to Mars by Perseverance and would fly in a few months. And actually, it will be the first powered flight anywhere outside of Earth. Uh, this helicopter, Ingenuity, uses Qualcomm's Snapdragon, a chip that is often used for your cell phones and has multiple ARM cores and several core processors like GPU and DSP. So these modern chips would open the door for many promising capabilities. One example is terrain-aware navigation. What it means? The Perseverance's AutoNav, enhanced AutoNav, solely depends on stereo vision for detecting obstacles, meaning that it only uses geometric information. So, this is the way that the rover see the world. But human astronauts who drove the lunar buggy used more information than this. In fact, this apparently flat and benign train on this picture actually looks like this to human eyes. It's flipping back and forth. This is the same picture. But you can see a mystery in type like you know, there's an area of sand, areas are covered by rocks. It's so obvious to human eyes. And in fact, 
human drivers heavily rely on such semantic information to make judgments about traversability and safety. Whales tend to sleep on sand, it needs more energy to drive on sand, for example. Uh, it's the same for Mars rovers. In fact, you know, spirit was trapped in sand, and opportunity and curiosity were also nearly embedded in sand. So, how can we incorporate semantic information into autonomous driving? Well, that's something that self-driving cars on Earth are routinely doing by using convolutional neural network. And we can do that for Mars, obviously, with high-performance spacecraft computing. And Spock is our implementation of Terrain Classifier using Deep Lab B V3 model, which takes images as an input and identifies surface types such as sand, gravel, vegetation. And we deployed it on a test rover called Athena and test it in Arroyo Seco right next to JPL. We also trained Spock, excuse me, uh, it's a different slide, and, and you can actually use the semantic information to predict driving cost, such as energy usage, and you can incorporate that into the objective function of path planner to drive efficiently. Now, uh, we also trained Spock uh, on the Navicam images, the actual images on Mars from Curiosity. We ran a, a, a citizen science project on the internet. Uh, we collected about uh, 300k labels uh, that was used for training. And we also collected about 1k labels from JPL experts, including robot drivers and geologists, for testing. And we achieved 97% overall accuracy of terrain classification, evaluated against the expert labels. So it's pretty good. Now, let's move on to the next topic. The machine learning is useful not only for perception, but also for planning. And this is a joint work with Professor Yisan Yue uh, at Caltech and his students. We've been collaborating with Yisan over many years on various topics. So, uh, here is the motivation for this work. If you present the picture on this slide to humans, uh, he or she can intuitively come up with a path that is safe. But Perseverance's path manner does not have such an intuition, so it lays out a tree which has thousands of path options, and then evaluates every branch to pick the best one. If an algorithm has human-like intuition, then the planning could be substantially faster. And in technical terms, such an algorithmic intuition is called search heuristics. So we developed two heuristics for enhanced autonomous algorithm. One is human designed, and the other is machine learned. The heuristics tells the planner which branches in the tree are more promising than others. And unlike end-to-end -end machine learning approach, which you know often lacks safety guarantee, the beauty of this approach is that once the planner picks up the path, the model-based collision checking, the same one uh, that is used in perseverance, is run on the selected path in the end so that we can get the same safety guarantee. And it turned out that the machine learned heuristics uh, implemented by a relatively simple deep neural net called UNET outperformed the human designed one. And it resulted in 76% reduction in the number of collision checking for finding a path. Uh, four times acceleration, and also it resulted in more efficient path selections. Great! Okay, so here's another interesting problem. Imagine that with all of the advanced onboard autonomy, such as the ones that I mentioned, a robot can now drive many kilometers per day. The rate that you know it can produce uh, that the rate, the data rate that it can produce is basically proportional to the speed. So, you know, as you increase the driving speed and driving distance per day, at some point, it won't be able to send all the pictures and observational data back to Earth due to the bandwidth limitation.
Then, what if you know rover just passes by a green monster without noticing it? And looking back at the past rover missions, you know we haven't found uh, green monster, but there were many serendipitous discoveries that might have been missed by a high-speed rover, uh, such as the evidence of neutral water or uh, or, or meteorites or Mars. So. How can we reconcile the desire of driving faster and longer and the fear of missing something like a green monster? Our answer to this problem is what we call the interplanetary Google search. When you do a Google search, you send a query over the internet to a remote server sitting at Google and only the relevant information comes back to you. You never download all of the petabytes of data to your local machine to do the search, right? But in contrast, in the current spacecraft ops, you have to first downlink all the data to Earth before doing search and analysis. But the modern spacecrafts can produce substantially more data than it can send back. So what would make sense? Uh, what would make more sense is something like Google. You send a query. Um, um, excuse me. To, um, to a spacecraft and uh, so that only the relevant data is downlinked. But of course, to enable uh, such an onboard search, you need to index the data first. Here's one approach to index onboard imagery. We used a network called show, attend, and tell, uh, which produces a, a natural language explanation of an image. And we trained the model by curiosity images uh, with captions provided by a geologist so that the model can automatically produce geological explanation of Martian picture in natural language. Now we can use this uh, uh, text natural language explanation as an index and we prototype a search interface deployed on the Athena rover and test it in Arroyo so that as the rover drives it dumps thousands of images um, with text text explanation attached to it and a remote user can send a text-based query to selectively download the relevant images. And in December 2020, we successfully performed a demo to showcase a number of machine learning based autonomy algorithms for robots, uh, including the one that I mentioned. And I don't have time today to go over this uh, exciting demo but there is a YouTube movie, so please check it out. Okay, so let's conclude the talk. The Mars rover Perseverance has landed on Mars last week, and he has a very sophisticated autonomous driving capability called Enhanced Autonav. But still, the driving rate is limited to about uh, 0.1 miles per hour, and Mars is much bigger than she can explore. And we know that we can drive much, much faster. We did that in Apollo on the moon, but with human intelligence. But now, with high-performance onboard computing, robots can, can, can accommodate advanced autonomy algorithms, including the ones using deep learning, to safely drive faster and longer. And we developed and successfully deployed and demonstrated some of those algorithms. Of course, there are remaining challenges. Uh, one is V and V, and another is how to gain trust from humans, since otherwise algorithm would have uh, no chance to be used on board. Uh, actually, it's a topic that uh, I am working with Lorraine and Aerospace Corporation now in an ongoing task. Okay, thank you very much for your attention, and if you have questions, thoughts, comments, please uh, send me an email.